I'm here with Haley Williams, former NWHL player for the Buffalo, Buffalo Buttes, former CWHL player for the Brampton Thunder and Toronto Furies, who has moved to playing overseas in Russia for two years and is now a member of KMH, Budapest, and the EWHL. When she is not playing, she is also coaching with Hockey Worldwide Academy. Welcome, Haley. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. So you are currently in Budapest. What made you transition from playing in Russia to now joining the KMH? Uh, well, it all just came down to the virus and uh, the unfortunate situation. My team from last year folded and um, it was just really hectic and stuff. So I had to kind of make a decision. Do I wait to try to see if they'll save the team or should I take an opportunity that I have in Budapest? And I ended up making the change and it's enjoyable so far. That's good. Good to hear. And uh, what's it like having to relocate to a new foreign country, especially during COVID? Um, yeah, so I think the COVID thing probably makes a big difference for the relocation because here we're in a we're in a lockdown pretty much. We have a curfew of 8 p.m. the whole country. So you have to be inside your home unless you're maybe walking a dog within 500 meters of your uh, apartment or your home. Um, mm -hmm. So we, there's not really much to experience, I guess you could say. Everything's closed. Like I can go to the store, the mall, um, but you can't go to a restaurant and sit down. You can order takeout. Um, so the, the COVID is probably the biggest reason why I can't really compare what's, what it's like if it were to be a normal everyday life, you know? Uh, I was really immersed in Russia. I was very much immersed there and I was learning the language, learning about the culture. So it was kind of a big shock for me to have to relocate Although ultimately it was my choice. I thought it would be better for me, but um, I really, I mean, I, I love Russia so much and I, and I like Budapest too, but I haven't been here long enough to be able to say, I love it, love it. You know, like right. I like it as like a visitor, I guess you could say, but <laughs> living is not the same as what I experienced in Russia. Right. So what was, um, so since you don't have too much to talk about, about Budapest just yet, what was one of your favorite places to go in Russia? Uh, I think just going for walks like down Nevsky Prospect and seeing the old architecture and everything and how beautiful St. Petersburg is. Um, that's where I lived was in St. Petersburg for most of oh, the time. Wow. So yeah, just being in that city was amazing. Everywhere you go, everywhere you look is just some amazing architecture or statue or something and really beautiful. Nice. So what was it like playing for Russia? Were there big crowds at the games? Like how was that experience playing with that team? The experience was amazing. Um, we were treated very professionally. Mm -hmm. from everything to having a place to live through the team. They fed us, they paid us well. Uh, the fans were not that, we didn't have many fans. I mean, the ones that we did have were loyal and I feel like it's pretty similar around, around the world for women's hockey. It's kind of try to grow the game right. in all different countries. So um, yeah, but I mean, overall it was a great experience. I, I really liked it, the feel of the professional athlete life, right? So I didn't have to have another job. I was able to just focus on playing and, and um, progressing throughout that time there and actually learning the language, like I said, just learning the culture, obviously I had to adjust uh, the biggest adjustment of my life because nobody spoke English. So that was like the oh, most, yeah. here it's much different. Everybody speaks English. My coach coaches oh, in English. Wow. So it's just much different than that type of culture shock. Nice. So I know I had a friend in high school who tried to learn Russian and she said it, it was so difficult because the alphabet is extremely like it's just different. It's not the same like in Spanish or French. You can kind of relate it back to the English alphabet, but a Russian like learning that language. So I couldn't imagine. Did you pick up any of the language at all or? Yeah, I pretty much. I I mean, I wouldn't say I'm fluent in Russian, but I can have full on conversations and do whatever I want. I, like I never really studied it, maybe just on Duolingo on my phone, but right. uh, yeah, I guess I, I'm, I can speak Russian, you know, I don't know <laughs> how to, how to explain my level of Russian, but like if I can call somebody on the phone right now and have a normal Russian conversation. That's awesome. So what would you, if there was somebody that we came to you and they were like, hey, you know, I'm in college right now, but I'm looking to go overseas, what would your advice be to that person? I would say uh, you'd have to know what your purpose for wanting to go overseas would be. Uh, like if you wanted to play competitive hockey, if you want, if it was about hockey and you wanted to mm -hmm. go somewhere and, and fight for your spot and, and, you know, make a good salary and, and hockey is really the life that you're living, then I would say that going over to Russia would be a good, good idea. But for as, as an import player that they, mm -hmm. there's a huge expectation for you. So it's not like you're just going over to go over for a year and have a, uh, good overseas experience 
which I'm saying it is a good overseas experience, but it's not like you're every weekend you have, or whenever you have the games off, you're now traveling to a different country there, there, there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if my, if my situation here in Budapest without the virus, I would have been able to travel to so many different countries for our, mm -hmm. on our off days, you know, so we'll have like one or two days off every once in a while and just rent a car or go on the train and go somewhere which I think if you wanted to do that, if it was like more of a European experience, I would say mm -hmm. maybe in the EWHL, which is where I play now, would be a better idea or the Sweden, uh, Swedish league has, you know, there's leagues all over, there's leagues all over Europe, but I would say uh, if you're looking for something, it depends on what you're looking for, right? right. So it depends on, you'd have to know why do you want to go overseas? Like one, one and done, like I want to go for a year, experience the cultures around maybe, maybe Budapest right so you can just go right. travel around but if it's like I want to play a five-year career at the most competitive league that I can after college then Russia would be a good I would say Russia would be a good league or the Swedish that's league. awesome so yeah. what um what countries what other countries have you been to just to visit um well I've been to obviously Russia Hungary mm -hmm. Poland uh Estonia Lithuania, Latvia, China, Italy, Spain. Mm, I have probably more that I can't think of right now. Uh, Greece I've been to. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been to a lot of countries and I'm so fortunate. It's all because of hockey. Like That's all of my awesome. opportunities that I've been overseas were all related to hockey. So, I mean, besides awesome. like obviously I'm here so I can go do that visiting and stuff like that. So, but if I wasn't here already then it wouldn't be because of hockey, right? Right. <laughs> so um, what would be like one of your favorite memories overseas? If you could pick one, what, what sticks out to you in your mind? Um, I think just my everyday, I, I don't know if I have one. Well, I guess probably when it comes down to it, the all-star weekends for, for the mm -hmm. Russian league when I was in two all-star weekends was just really a professional experience they really put on a good show and everything so that's probably memory wise would mm -hmm. be probably those two weekends but um just like the everyday experience of like growing as a person I think is probably what I'll remember like just learning a new language learning about new cultures putting myself in these situations that are not comfortable right like it's not right. anything that is known to me and the person that I feel like I'm becoming because of these experiences is really what I'll remember forever and I also that's fostered awesome. a couple dogs here in Budapest. So that's, those are, I'll remember those little guys too. Nice. So, How many dogs did you foster? I have fostered two. I just had the one get adopted the other day, actually, a couple days ago. So oh, wow. I'm not fostering another one because I'll leave mid-March. So I'm not here much longer. And I want to make sure that I am prepared and not just taking care of a dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Elder dog is pretty uh, difficult in a handful. So you got to really put a lot of care into them. Yeah. Wow, I couldn't imagine. I've heard of people doing it in there. I had a friend do it and she was like, oh, but I couldn't let him go. So I ended up adopting him and I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, I couldn't so imagine. Years. Yeah, it was just yeah. crying my eyes out. Even before when <laughs> my first foster dog, I'm just like bawling in the locker room before the game. Oh. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to cry, but I just <laughs> gave my dog away. He was like, I yeah, because you get attached. You definitely get attached. I mean, you're taking care of them. They might have been through something really difficult and you're maybe helping them get back their strength or whatever. So I can understand you develop a really strong bond with them, even though it might be a short amount of time. Yeah. That's exactly. awesome. So I noticed on your Instagram that you started teaching yourself piano. How is that going? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a piano here in Budapest, but when I was in Russia, so I left, I still have my piano that was in Russia. Man, I was so, I, so dedicated to that too. I really was. <laughs> I was, I, I kind of forgot about it until you reminded me, but that was like July-ish, like July till September. I was teaching myself for like two and a half months and I was practicing every day. And I was all, I could already play three songs, like not fast, not like, you know, whatever famous musician, but right. like, I was proud of myself, but I haven't played since September 22nd. So I, I oh. never remembered, but I will pick that up again. Yeah. So that's but, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So um, we're going to get ready to go into our lightning round questions as we wrap up our conversation. So I'll just go ahead and start. So your favorite pregame song. Ooh. I don't have one. I just put it on shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> just put it on shuffle. Okay. Your favorite TV show? Uh, right now, Glee. 
I'm nice. really into Glee. Yeah. Nice. Musical. Okay. Your favorite holiday? Christmas. Nice. Me too. So what is one place that you want to travel that you haven't visited yet? I'd like to go to Thailand. Ooh. That's uh, somewhere that's been on my list for a while and something that's been talked about and close to doing even last year, but then the, the virus. So Yeah, that's definitely a place that I would want to go to. So your favorite pregame meal? Um, usually chicken, usually kind of like a fajita type, I guess you could say, uh, setup. Okay. Not spicy though, because we don't want any <laughs> spicy acid stomach, but right. you know, chicken, peppers, onions, uh, maybe some corn, sour cream, wrap it up in a tortilla. So I don't know what you'd call it, maybe a fajita. Yeah, probably a fajita. That sounds pretty good though. I might have to try that myself. <laughs> so uh, Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Okay, and last one, do you prefer text or phone calls? Uh, I wish I preferred phone calls. <laughs> but I would, I have to say text. I do. And I always, that's one of my things that I'm like trying to work on, make more yeah. phone calls, make more phone calls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Haley, for chatting with me today. I wish you luck as you continue to play with KMH Budapest. And can you tell our audience where they can follow you on social media? Uh, yeah. So my Instagram is Haley Williams athlete, H-A-Y-L-E-Y -E Williams athlete. And then my Twitter, I don't really use, I guess Instagram would be the best. <laughs> Instagram and is the best one. Viewing hockey is my business Instagram. Okay, great. And is that in your bio so that they can see that as well? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.